Um, to be part of the Hamburg series. Um, my name is Julian Meisen and I'm a partner of the uh, architectural practice common agency. Uh, and today I will speak about our practice and our project Neues Amt Altona. And I will also speak about our practice first because the project Neues Amt Altona is very much connected to uh, our practice, the ideas behind our practice and the uh, position we are taking. Um, and the, the um, presentation will focus on um, the aspects of Noise Amt Altona as a um, process of um, building up an institution and a process of building a house. Um, but first I will um, say something about common agency. Um, Common Agency was founded in 2020 by uh, Hans, Cornelius and myself. Um, <clears throat> we are based in Berlin um, and in Hamburg. Um, and Common Agency is um, kind of the reflection on a changing role of the architect and is the result of um, uh, a discussion that uh, Hans, Cornelius and me have had for um, a longer time since we studied together in Berlin. Um, uh, and the question like, what is the right way to um, start your career as a young architect uh, nowadays? Uh, and we always had a feeling that this should be the underlying question for us. Um, and that we should uh, find a, let's say, a new and maybe a fresh approach um, to um, position oneself within the field of architecture uh, as it becomes increasingly dif difficult for young uh, practices to establish themselves in a highly, um, uh, uh, let's say, systemized, standard standardized um, uh, uh, practice environment. So um, <clears throat> it is, Therefore, also the result of the experience we gained working for leading architecture practices, project developers and design agency. And as you see here, it is not that we have worked not only for architecture uh, offices, but um, even um, uh, since we uh, thought about this, qu this question, which I mentioned, like how should we start our career, we were very much interested in um, putting ourselves into a position where we would be able to initiate projects ourselves so that we are not dependent on competitions and uh, on clients from, from the real estate industry, for instance, but that we somehow find ways to, um, to initiate project ourselves. And with that in mind, we um, all at some point quit our jobs at architecture offices and started to work for project developers and uh, in the case of Hans also for a design agency. So this kind of, um, uh, so we extended our set of skills. Um, and, um, but still for us, the foremost goal was um, what we described as uh, we aim to meet today's social, environmental and aesthetical challenges by increasing the physical quality and cultural meaning of lived space. So in a way it is really the question of how can we produce good architecture does that responds to the challenges, to the like enormous challenges we are facing today. And um, uh, only uh, this kind of um, approach or, or, or the, the, the will um, uh, to, to provide answers really um, uh, made us rethink the role of the architect and all of that. And, um, Coming from this, we, we felt like we have to restore architectural agency. So it was really for us a question, how can we put ourselves in, in a position where we have more influence on the work we do, where we can really 
uh, apply all the um, knowledge and the ethos we we were acquired at architecture schools and um, um, how can that inform our practice so we are really interested in kind of um, providing an alternative role uh, of architects um, with our practice and uh, to have new structures for space making to explore these new structures and this again then makes it possible for us as um, the project of noise and alternate proofs that we can put ourselves in a position where we initiate the development design and realization of objects buildings and places um, so this is really what what we are we're interested in here we see it again like on the left hand side it's us as architects on on the right hand side is kind of where we want to go to which is a truly contemporary architecture in a way that it really uh, meets today's social environmental and aesthetical challenges and on the one hand produces space which is in its material physical quality um, a good and appropriate space but also um, takes into account the need for a cultural meaning that has to be um, uh, inscribed into those spaces. So there's this classic path, which we call the service path, which we are also following, which is um, there's an opportunity, a design competition, a direct commission or study that we do. Then um, we work uh, as a service provider and provide design and planning. Um, and um, you know there there are like some some advantages like you work within established structures and you have a, a relatively small entrepreneurial risk as an architect. On the other hand, there are like some um, disadvantages um, that were making us even think about um, uh, alternative ways of space production as an architect which is uh, that we are highly dependent on the client. We have very little control on the impact. Um, we mostly have a limited design freedom and also a limited value participation. So <clears throat> this all um, led us to consider what we describe as the agency path for project to happen. So, which is, it also starts with an opportunity, but this opportunity is now something a bit more loose. It's an, either an idea that needs a place and user, a place that needs an idea and a user, or a user that needs an idea and a place. So this is kind of like a, a more like classic um, uh, um, uh, kind of structure of how projects being developed. Um, and um, in order to find, those ideas, places, or users, you really have to proactively go out uh, and, and, and have a look and, and, and somehow be, be very busy and, and, and curious about finding those opportunities, um, which then, um, <clears throat> if it works, um, can put you in um, the position of an initiator of something where you not only have to do the design and the planning, but you also have to um, think about the financing concept and us as we are, uh, we don't, we're not really in the possession of, of big capital. So we, we always are looking for alternative ways of financing projects, um, like through cooperatives, for example, um, as it's the case with Noise and Altona. And then, we have um, a lot of different fields that we also have to have to work on. So it's marketing, it's kind of the stakeholder management. We tend to 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 do those pro projects in partnerships with other institutions, um, and 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 then have like even more like a, a bigger field of collaborators because we have much more um, much more things to do. Um, and then this kind of as we experience it so far, gives us a greater design freedom. I will uh, talk about that later. It opens up a space for innovation. It opens up a space, a space to kind of do something that has a social impact um, and that is environmentally more responsible. Um, and also there's a greater value participation for the architect. But on the other hand, it is of course much more work. It is much more risk and it's very complex. So. 
it is we don't want to pretend that it's like an easy way or 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 necessarily the best way but it's just a way that we find with like our specific profile as a as a very um uh, uh, um very rewarding um uh, approach towards um the greater project which is to somehow um, realize uh, um, the architecture that fulfills uh, our our today's uh, needs for more social, more env environmentally um, uh, 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 better performing architecture, and also to somehow also think about aesthetics and and how to find a way how how we can um, reformulate architectural aesthetics in a way that is somehow matches um, the uh, greater uh, envelope of this project structure. So how can we, <clears throat> how can those new project structures inform um, our, our way of designing um, buildings and, and, and its whole kind of aesthetical dimension. So that's what we are interested in. Um, and um, as I said in the beginning, we are very happy that we, that actually our first project that we did um, can be taken as a pretty accurate illustration of, um, of, of this position uh, that we formulated. So <clears throat> Neusamt Altona. Neusamt Altona is a project in Hamburg. Um, it is um, the result of a conceptual tender which is a format that is, has been has gaining increasing popularity in, in Germany um, because um, the state or city, they don't give away uh, land uh, uh, anymore or they more and more often give away land not to a party that bids for the land and offers um, uh, the highest price for it but to um, but it then gives the land to um, someone who is applying for it and has a concept that uh, really focuses on the social impact on the environmental responsibility and so on and in return um, the city uh, uh, doesn't really ask for a high price so it's mostly the the, the price is like not the um, decisive um, uh, factor in this um, and this such a tender um, was um, done in Hamburg in 2018 for the former Altona tax office. Altona is a part of Hamburg um, and um, we um, teamed up with uh, Beta House which is a local co-working provider and um, made an offer uh, for this concept, conceptual tender. And um, here we see um, both sides of this former tax office. On the right hand side, we see the, the facade of it um, with some shops in the basement. Um, and uh, on the other side, we see the back side, which is facing a large pedestrian zone, um, which was built in the 60s. Um, and there is a two story. Um, building um, uh, directly at the pedestrian zone. And in the back, you see uh, this kind of L-shaped building of this former tax office in Altona. Um, I will first say something um, about the location so that we can locate the project properly within Hamburg. And then I will continue to speak a little bit about how we ended up doing the project. So here we, on the left-hand side, we see um, a map of Hamburg. Um, and on the right hand side, we see we have a, a closer look to the area. So <clears throat> there is the train station Bahnhof Hamburg Altona, which is um, uh, which has an intercity connection. So if you um, take a train there, you're uh, two hours in Berlin. Um, and our um, uh, property is here. It's really only 100 meters away from it. Um, and uh, it's at this huge pedestrian zone here. Um, and then there is the IKEA in Hamburg Altona, which is also kind of a kind of a landmark in this context. Um, 
because it attracts a lot of people every day, which are mostly coming from this or who are, who are getting out of the train station and then walking through this pedestrian zone, entering the IKEA. There's also a huge restaurant, which is very popular uh, within the neighborhood, um, also for all sorts of social group and, and, and also like lower, lower income uh, groups. Um, and then um, we are kind of in the middle of that. Um, and that's that's a very interesting um, area. And the area itself has been um, renovated in the last um, uh, 10, 10 to 15 years. So um, uh, the city invested a lot of money into it. Um, and uh, also you see that you're not so far from the river Elbe, which then in Hamburg is um, uh, very close to the uh, North Sea as well. Here we see um, uh, a screenshot um, of the uh, 3D model of the area with the train station on the left and this huge IKEA on the right, it's pedestrian zone. You see this uh, kind of 1960s structure of the um, buildings that are adjacent to the pedestrian zone. Uh, and, and we see, which is marked red, the existing, um, buildings, which are part of the property, um, uh, which we are going to um, uh, transform. And um, the property was uh, interesting um, for a lot of people because it has the potential to build a new building there, which is now being shown in white. <clears throat> Here we see a picture of the pedestrian zone um, which was probably taken in, in the 60s after it was built. So it was back then um, a, a more lively um, environment, I would say, as today. Uh, today it has been um, undergoing this um, huge transformation and it's, um, uh, which is still ongoing. So it's an area which has been a little bit neglected over the years, uh, in the past decades, but recently um, is now being um, now being uh, re revitalized. Um, and here we are again with our uh, building and so on. So Hamburg Neues Amt Altona building an institution. As I said in the beginning, the project is very much about those two aspects, building an institution and building a house. Um, so for this conceptual tender, when we teamed up with uh, Beta House Hamburg, um, we had the initial idea to combine cooperative and co-working. So um, we pr proposed to found a cooperative, which is going to acquire the building, the property, which is going to um, build this new building um, and which is also going to um, to protect the existing, the, the tenants of the existing building because the existing building is used as a, um, as a place with uh, low rents for um, local creatives. Um, and the uh, tender also formulated the demand to have, um, to, to secure the existing rents for at least 10 years. So we said that we are going to found this cooperative and that we are actually going to uh, secure those rents for at least 20 years. Um, and then also kind of think about a process where the, the people who are now renting those spaces within those years have the chance to become also part of the cooperative so that we don't, that we kind of keep the existing ecosystem there and, and also slowly integrated into the bigger project. So that is kind of um, a, um, a an interesting um, thing for, for, for all stakeholders involved. Um, <clears throat> so the principle of cooperative, which is that you have collective property at uh, the lowest cost for, for the users, that the users are shareholding, um, corresponding to a paid in capital that you have one member, one vote. So it's very democratic. It, uh, it doesn't matter how many shares you have in a cooperative, you always have one vote. 
um, and then you have like regular membership meetings and you really have a kind of community um, and it's somehow also value driven that is uh, uh, kind of regulated or clearly said that cooperative that there's not a space for discrimination and so on um, and then on the other hand you have the principles of co-working which um, which is that you believe that it is a good thing to to kind of work with other people which are maybe similar in their interests in what they do that there's um, a kind of a benefit of networking together that you share infrastructure and through that uh, save costs that you have spatial and financial flexibility and also that there also is a community which is being managed and where there are events and so on and noise and Arjuna is really the combination of both principles so uh, we propose that uh, we found a cooperative the cooperative is going to acquire the site and then is operating the building in the co-working modules which means that um, we have uh, normally in cooperatives you can uh, buy shares of the cooperative and in return you get uh, a certain amount of square meters with us you don't get a certain amount of square meters but a certain amount of workspaces and those workspaces are co-working workspaces so there's a community managed and it's a service to it and so on um, and that really is the core of the idea which is also now um, <clears throat> uh, which which in this case as we are um, also using the principle as a, of a cooperative um, makes it possible to lower the costs for the workplace uh, of each member of the cooperative because in this kind of cooperative um, organization we don't have the profit that normally a real estate player would have he would uh, the real estate player would would, would need a certain amount of profit um, uh, which which we don't have in our project costs so it makes us uh, gives us a possibility to to have um, workplaces below the market uh, level um, and also um, it puts the users in a much more um, influential proactive um, uh, position because they are part of the ownership it is collective ownership as we see on the right and they kind of co-design and co-build the space they really participate in the whole process and the designing and have the chance to make sure that what is being built really fits their needs whereas in a kind of like more conventional way of ownership um, you have um, the case that we don't know who's going to be the user one day and so um, the user is just like we can only um, have a have a kind of a guess what what it what those new users are going to to ask for and um, that leads that many pro many office projects are being built um, uh, in a very standardized way and the standardized way is kind of pre preventing um, innovation to happen and um, and also users have then less responsibility for the space that they're using so we think that users are part of but are also owners co-owners of a space really makes them really, uh, offers us the chance to um, to do something much more innovative uh, um, as as architects or as uh, developers um, so here we see finally we see the building a little bit at least um, we see the kind of reddish part is uh, the part where the new cooperative is going to which is going to be used as a co-working space um, then you see blue the existing building which is this creative hub that i described and which is being protected um, it's being connected with the new building um, but basically all the rents and so on will be kept like it is um, no one will be displaced from the building and then we have a, a ground floor which is an element that puts both things together um, in a way that uh, um, uh, it's it's a kind of a meeting space for the user of the building, but also really for the neighborhood. So we are still in a very diverse and also more like lower income neighborhood there, and really carefully thinking how to 
how to kind of create an attractive um, uh, ground floor there with gastronomy and so on, but also um, kind of prevent gentrification as much as possible in a way that we 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 are looking specifically for um, uh, for future um, uh, people from gastronomy who offer something that is uh, affordable. Uh, and so on. And then there will be events which are organized by the cooperative. Um, there will be a bar uh, and there will also be probably neighborhood associations which have the chance to, um, to do uh, activities there. So this is really meant as something that is not only for the people working inside the building, but for the whole neighborhood to, to, to uh, have a new space where they can go to. Um, um, and this is the uh, kind of the original uh, people of the cooperative, like, like this, the team of Neuss and Altona cooperative, which founded it in 2020. Um, we are partly architects, at least the three of us from Common Agency, but then we also have like uh, local entrepreneurs from more like the social realm. We have a building engineer, we have, we have uh, an anthropologist and so on. And so with this relatively diverse group, we are trying to, um, uh, to, to, to develop this project. Um, and here, because I was talking a lot about the role of the architect and now our role inside this kind of new institution that we founded, I wanted to show this because it shows kind of very well how we come into situations where we are really redefining what we have to do as architects. So, um, we have um, the board of directors, which is basically managing the, uh, the cooperatives. And there's one member of our architecture firm, Cornelius, who is part of this. Uh, then we have the supervisory board uh, of this, where, where I am a member of. Um, then we have the level of the project planners, where we are, as architects, obviously, are involved. Uh, and then we also have kind of a role which, which could be described as a creative direction where we, uh, starting this year, uh, are going to kind of rework the, um, the whole uh, design of the project, which is not architecture. Um, so Common Agency and our three partners are kind of um, distributed or, or uh, on, on within all those different levels uh, within a project, um, which makes it sometimes difficult. It needed us, uh, or it really needed us to, to, have, to take more time to sort out the right structures. But now we really feel that we found very good um, modules, how to, how to cope with, with all the tasks that have to be done, uh, all the regulations, all uh, kind of the uh, project structures. And, um, and it really um, defines as we find kind of a, um, an unusual role for us as architects, uh, but, but a role that, that we are really kind of um, aspire to have. And, and, and we are kind of happy that we found the structure now, which works well. Um, since um, the uh, decision was made that, um, Common Agency and Beta House Hamburg are going to be um, in charge of the um, revitalization of Neues Amt. There has been also a lot of media attention. Here we see a couple of newspaper articles from local, but also from um, like uh, 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 not, not local uh, uh, um, newspapers like Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung or Die Zeit. Um, and um, so uh, what we are doing there, there's, there's a lot of public interest in the project and um, uh, the press is like uh, really following what we're doing. Um, part of this setting up of an institution is also that you, that you do a campaign, that you um, do marketing because you somehow have to, um, have to promote the project. You have to find future members of the cooperative and so, uh, from time to time, there are campaigns like this in Hamburg um, with uh, posters. Um, just to give another example of the kind of like extended role of architects in this project. 
And then there's a strong social mission um, with this project. So here we have a little overview of the different parts of the projects again, and uh, kind of the um, uh, social implications uh, we have with it. So um, we see um, the co-working part of the building is, as I said, um, co-working, which is like uh, connected to a high degree of participation and also um, prices for the single members, which are strongly below the market. Um, we have even one floor, which is publicly subsidized rents for nonprofit organization, where we are cooperating with the city of Hamburg and the city of Hamburg allows those um, nonprofit organization to, to work there for very, very little money. Um, and then also we aim to um, rent the uh, spaces on the ground floor for as little money as possible uh, so that it's still economically feasible, but um, uh, it will be um, really drastically below the average rent on, on a pedestrian zone like that. Um, and then, as I said, we have the existing uh, hub where we are securing the um, existing rents for at least 20 years and protecting this ecosystem there and ideally kind of um, combining it with the new ecosystem of the cooperative. So um, not so much architecture, but in order to explain what comes now, which is architecture, we find it, it is very, very interesting or like very important to, 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 to know about um, all uh, kind of the, the setup of the project and the um, social framework um, in which it unfolds. So building a house, um, how does this lead to a special kind of architecture? Here we see um, a model that we built, which is relatively big, and um, it is now, um, we put it in the um, storefront uh, of, the, of the existing um, space in Hamburg, um, uh, which serves as a temporary pop-up space for the project. Um, and as you see, um, it is a building that is strongly divided into a lower part uh, and, and an upper part. And kind of the dividing line is a huge balcony, which is uh, not made for human beings, but rather for plants. So we have um, a high amount of um, uh, soil, which is filled into this balcony and really make sure that we have a green facade, which is a proper green facade. So green facades are always dependent on the amount of, of soil that you that you have where, where, where the plants are being planted in. And, and we are planning this together with a specialist um, uh, from, from Munich. Uh, and, and they are um, uh, really, we, we kind of made sure that, that we have um, a green facade. Which, which has really a lot of soil, so plants can grow all over the facade. Um, <clears throat> um, also, this kind of green facade is going to um, be balcony structures, more in the, in the upper floors for, for um, the users of the building. So you, we will be able to step out uh, of your office onto um, this, uh, uh, structure and then uh, you have some outside space because we think in uh, like contemporary world of office and work it is very important to have a free space um, available directly or very close to your office space um, to your desk um, and um, yeah so um, here we see some ecological aspects of the building which were also kind of part of the concept for the project from the beginning. Um, from the beginning, we said, we are going to fund a cooperative and so on, but we are also going to have like a very sustainable architecture or like an architecture which is as sustainable as possible. That's why we are trying to build building as much as possible from wood. We have um, a, a kind of more concrete based um, zone, uh, um, uh, and in the two lower floors, which is necessary um, uh, for the whole structure of the building, for also the way it is being 
the foundation works there. This, uh, this um, uh, site is very complicated because we have a, a garage that is kind of uh, very uh, kind of going under our um, buildings. So we first have to um, build something very, very solid and stable. And then we have uh, kind of like a, like a pedestal. And then on top of that, we have the wood construction. Um, and on top of that, we have um, a green roof, um, which will be also um, a, um, a recreation zone for um, the users of the building. Um, and then we have on both sides of the facade, uh, the structure uh, where you can step out and where you are actually inside this green facade, which adds uh, a new vertical green space to this pedestrian zone, which is unfortunately not very green at all. Um, so we hope that it will trigger uh, a more um, uh, eco-friendly um, uh, uh, kind of development of, of this whole area. And it won't be the last green facade um, in this street. Um, here we see a section of the building it's just that we are kind of more or less exclusively um, using regenerative energies. We have a huge field of photovoltaic on the roof. Uh, we are planning to um, consume energy from a eco-friendly power plant, which is not so far in Hamburg, was a very interesting project. Um, and we are using the gray water of the building um, to water the plants from the, um, from uh, uh, the green facade and for that we also will have a huge water tank um, uh, in the basement of the building. Um, here we see again the positioning of the building in its urban context. The pedestrian zone in the south and street in the north. Um, and what, what is also interesting about the whole situation that we kind of create a new connection between both sides of the blocks. So you will be able to walk through an open surface um, and then entering a little courtyard and ending up on the street here. Um, so it will hopefully make the whole uh, block, but also the courtyard situation more lively and activate all those spaces which are currently unused. Um, this is how we are currently imagining the building. Um, we see in the uh, lower floors these new V-shaped um, pillars. I will talk about that later when we look at the section. Um, then this balcony, um, plant balcony, which kind of marks the um, the kind of uh, <clears throat> the border between the concrete uh, construction and the wood construction in the upper floors. Um, and then we see this light structure with, which is added in front of the building. Um, and we'll have more and more over the years, more and more green um, Here again, we have some construction plans from the current state of the building. We are planning to finish the building in 2024. Um, and we are currently in planning and are hoping to start construction very soon. Um, again, you see the, um, the courtyard uh, and this connection through the whole property. Um, here in the ground floor, we have like more like an, an, an event space that will be used by different parties and stakeholders. We have something that is probably going to be a cafe. And then we have in the existing building also huge space that will also be used for um, gastronomy and neighborhood activities. Um, that is an interior perspective of the ground floor facing the pedestrian zone. Again, those um, V-shaped pillars are going to be a very strong characteristic uh, of, of the building, of, of the architecture. Um, 
we uh, see here the first floor where there will be a co-working but probably in a slightly different mode than in the upper floors. We are still in the kind of concrete part of the building. And now we are here in the upper floors, which is um, constructed from timber um, and has a very kind of uh, flexible but rigid um, uh, 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 layout of um, sometimes more like very small offices and then huge and then bigger zones um, bigger open spaces. Uh, so um, we are, of course, now in the process or we will, will start um, uh, soon the project, the process of allocating our um, uh, um, cooperative members to the spaces. And for that, we need a very flexible layout. And so this is just like one example of, of the floor, um, of, of the floor plan, how it could end up, but there are many many possibilities and it will probably also change over the years. So we are really aiming to have a building that is as flexible as possible because the cooperative is meant to last for at least hundred years. And within this time, there will be many changes. And so we just have to provide just the right shell for all those changes to happen inside. Um, here we have a little impression of how such an office could look like. Um, and um, we are developing that together with our partner from Beta House, this local um, co-working provider, who are very experienced, who, who are operating similar building in Hamburg at the moment. Um, and also, as it is visible, it, it will be uh, an environment that is um, very uh, strongly characterized by uh, by by the wood, the timber construction. Um, and the quality of those wooden surfaces, uh, as well as this view um, into this uh, green space that unfolds in front of your window. Um, here we see it from a different perspective and also see that the floor plan is meant to be highly adaptable and uh, can change over time to have as many configurations as possible. And we have our rooftop, um, which hopefully will be a very attractive space for the user of the building to, to enjoy, to have a recreation zone and to uh, have a look um, uh, until the, uh, over, over the city towards the, the river of Elbe. Um, and here, which is very interesting, we see the situation with the, um, with the, um, foundation of the building. On the left hand side, we see a garage, which is under the pedestrian zone, also goes under our building. Um, and that really forces us to have um, the building uh, cantilevering um, over, over uh, this kind of three meter deep uh, space um, on our facade. Um, and um, really makes us, um, it, it, it's something that there's no other way to, than doing it like this. Um, and, and of course it, it is a huge effort in terms of um, uh, uh, the whole engineering of the building. On the other hand, we, we really like those V-shaped columns and I think it really gives, is a kind of a strong sign uh, uh, and really adds something um, sculptural to, um, uh, to the lower part of the building. Um, here we see them again. And here we see them again from the outside. Also the idea is to have the facade in the lower part of the building as transparent as possible so that we really see the structure as well as it's a bit more closed uh, in the upper part also due to, to kind of the, the thermal um, uh, situation, the um, heat input of the sun and so on. It's a bit more closed. Um, yeah, here we see again, um, an elevation of the facade. Um, as it is right now, we are still in the process of planning. So there, there might be some, some changes here and there, but it's probably going to be very much look like this, as we see here. And um, we thank you very much.